So we now are closing and, uh, to the last session, the, the last day of the SOCAP events, and I'm very glad to be here. Uh, I just came here this morning and I saw the, the first sessions and then I had to go away for a couple of meetings. And coming back here and be able to present is, is really an honor for me. Uh, I've been working for this family-owned company for 26 years. And it's still owned by the owner and his two sons. And they are really in charge of operations. And that is also a very important part of why we're being so successful. The, the focus now on my 10 minutes is to be talking about how we are trying to be sustainable. And I will start with explaining what I see the reason how the problem in, in the world have, have developed. And the problem I'm going to describe is just by using one letter. And that is the letter of V. This letter of V symbolizes for me the social sustainability perspective. I will use it in another way to describe the ecological perspective. But on the social side, this also demonstrates the problem I see in the world globally when it comes to demographic changes. We know that uh, there is many people now that are retiring, and there are very few that are enter the, the labor market as young people. It's the same situation in the whole Western Hemisphere. It's also the same situation in China because of the one child labor policy. We know that the world will grow until the year 2050, and then it's going to decline. The problem is, of course, about resourcing human beings. The po the, uh, I'm in business, so for us it's very important that we find the right person. So therefore, what we see now is a problem, how we can get, they get the right person. And what I'm going to focus is to talk about an area that lays outside of the normal part, the normal person that we can hire and recruit. Back in, in 2001, when I was director of human resources, uh, every fifth person that we're going to put on a daily schedule was, to, was supposed to be a restaurant host. The problem was that nobody wanted to be the host. They wanted to do, to do the cashier or they wanted to fry, flip the burgers. So therefore, we understood that we had to find that person out of the, uh, the normal, that really didn't have the opportunity to have a normal job. So therefore, we looked for our solutions outside of the norm and find persons with slightly mental disabilities that were perfect for the job. And this is the solution. So the problem is, in the future, how can we even employ people? Therefore, we had to change the way, the pers perspectives that we see on people, that we treat people in our organization. If I then demonstrate the other V, and this is about the environmental perspective, and then I had to, of course, to put the V on this side. This is the problem we see when it comes to resources. The resources are declining, and this is something that you really know about. And at the same time, we know that consumption are increasing. So we had to change perspectives. We had to get the, 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 the people who want to consume to consume in another way. So the V symbolizes both the problem, but also the possibility. Uh, in 2007, the owner of Max, together with the board, together with the top management team, had made a decision. We wanted to find out what our problem was, really. And the problem really, we were inspired by the Katrina. Not inspired but in a positive way, but we were frightened about the problem. So therefore we decided to team up together with the Natural Step and conduct the baseline study to really find out what was the problem within Max. And the problem really, uh, what we discovered was the sourcing of the beef. The beef really was the biggest, uh, biggest problem. I had a problem when I was then director of sustainability because every week, in the end, Mr. Bergfors <coughs> called me. Every week he called me, is the report ready? When can we put the carbon on the menu? <coughs> Finally, the report came and we, of course, carbon labeled all our products, the whole complete menu. So we, therefore, we try to get the consumer, the customer, to really make a better choice, to understand that we had to do 
We had to change the way that we consume burgers. Of course, we took away a lot of, a lot of un unnecessary things, like the, the, the paper boxes for the kids' meals. We took away the toys, uh, the battery in the toys for the kids, etc. One of the first persons who really also answered and picked up the phone in 2009 was this person. In Sweden now, they've started to label food to show the customers the environmental damage rating. So it's giving the people a choice. You, you, you're told that you know, this burger is going to damage the atmosphere to the equivalent of this. And so at least the customers then can look at the goods and say, well, I, maybe I don't want to buy that. So it gives them the chance to buy sensibly and responsibly. Sir Paul McCartney in the European Parliament talking about four places in the world. And one of the things he talked about was the carbon labeling of Max Burger. We were then the first in the world to carbon label the whole menu. He wanted to address the, the leaders of the European Parliament to, to look at the, those four places and really t take those examples and do the same thing in, theirs, in their countries. The question is, has, something, has anything happened? I will to, uh, have that in the end, what has happened since 2008. Uh, the owners of Max is, as I said in the beginning, the father Kurt and his two sons, Richard and Christopher. Richard and Christopher, to, uh, together with the father, traveled in U.S. back in 2002, uh, when they were supposed to become in charge of the company as CEO and executive CEO. And uh, t uh, during four weeks, they consumed, together with the father, more than 800 burgers. <laughs> exactly. Coming home, they wasn't this slim or didn't look as good as on this picture. But they also understood that this is not a long-term uh, we, we can't serve burgers based on this on a long-term perspective. We had to change the way that we serve our burgers. We had to give alternatives for the consumer. So therefore, we launched a Deli Fresh menu, meaning that you have a couple of alternatives that you can pick from. Instead of the normal white pan bread, we introduce bread that are more sustainable with grains, etc. And of course, we, we try to really focus on low fat, low sugar, and, and uh, the funny thing is now that in recent survey I saw that 47% 40, of the customers coming into Max is women. So something has happened. We have been able to attract new groups. Uh, a Max burger of today, symbolized by this Deli Fresh chicken burger, is still based on taste and quality. And I'm also very glad that you, that you compared us with, with in and out burger here in the start, because in and out is really a little bit, not as good as we are, but almost. Uh, but they're a really good example of good quality burgers back in the US. But it's not just taste and quality, it's also another perspective that we see is very important. And that is the importance of serving burgers based on responsibility. And that is really what we are trying to do, and not just the health perspectives. Uh, so therefore, our way of serving burger based on, based on responsibility comes, of course, back to the sustainability perspective. How can we, be, we become sustainable? How can a fast food business be good? Is it possible? This is the way how we try to manage our system. This is the way how we are trying to really work with the sustainability perspectives. The core values are very important, where we back in 1996 introduced the fire theory and 2004 introduced the human element. In 2007, of course, introduced the natural step framework, the way how we make decisions. But you can't see those decisions, you can't see those, those, those methods when you enter a Max restaurant. What you see is, of course, the social aspect and the environmental perspective. You see that, that we employ people with disabilities. You hopefully, you see that the people that are serving the, the burgers are more happy, and they are running faster, and they probably stay longer. I'm not the, the, the one uh, within the business who has worked, worked most years. I've been working for 26 years, but there are many managers that have worked for over 30 years within the company. Uh, coming back to the social aspect, the standing we, the first one. So back in 2001, when I was director of, of human resources, I saw the problem. I couldn't employ people to this type of job as restaurant host. 
So therefore we focused on trying to employ people that really didn't normally get out in the normal work, work labor market. Uh, together with Samhal, that is a Swedish company, we formalized, formalized a, a, I would say, a type of program where the focus was not on the people with disabilities. The focus was instead on us as managers, taking away the prejudice about people with disabilities. Because we understood that at a very early stage that if we could just match the right person to the right job, it would work. For me, Lars is really a person or a, more of a symbol that it really works. Lars, at the age of 32, for six years ago, was employed, uh, and this was his first employment back up in PTO. Two years later, uh, he, I had, op had the honor of uh, following him to Brussels, where our program was highlighted as the best program in all Europe, just by focusing on the prejudice just by focusing on the managers. And Lars today, I would say, is one of the most influential persons, in spite of his triple numbers of disabilities. I think he has correct, direct connection to all party leaders in Sweden. So if you want to impose a new law, you should connect to Lars. This is uh, from the government's webpage where he met the present Minister of, of em, um, Employment. He has, of course, met the Prime Minister and, of course, met the other opinion leaders. Uh, for us, I would say the, the starting point is the managers. The starting point is, of course, the owners who say that this is important. But then the managers and the way that we are training them based on the human element, based on the fire theory. Meaning that we are letting our managers to travel within themselves. Of course we have manuals, of course we have instructions what you are, you are supposed to do and not supposed to do. But the most important is that you have to be self-aware. And the only way of doing this is to travel back in time. Where you meet yourself, you meet your own behavior, you meet your own feeling growing up as a kid. Being loved or not loved by your parents. Having problems in school or being maybe the the, the light in, in the school, having all the light on you. So when we travel all the way back to where, where each person are born, then they can then start traveling back and meet their own problems, meet their own feelings, meet their own behavior. And that is the, really the reason why we have so low turnover when it comes to our manager, managers. Because I believe many of them don't want to quick, quit. They, won't, they don't want to move to another company because our way of managing is more sustainable. Anyway, the leadership program it was, was launched back in 1996, and with the FIRO theory, the starting point, we, we talked more about the group as perspective, but in 2004 we deepened it with the human element, with the individual perspective. And then in 2007, we, we've focused on the next step. And the reason is really, how can we get, how can we create self-aware people? How can we create self-aware managers? Uh, and, and that is really the, the whole concept. This, is, uh, this was a recent survey presented, or not a recent, it was presented in June. And the question was raised, how, what company or organization do you think take responsibility for the climate? 1% of the population up to the age of 29, I would say, said 1% said Greenpeace, 2% said Naturskyddsföreningen, and 14% said Max Hamburgers. Yes, we have done something, and it took... Thank you. And it took three years to, to reach those numbers. This is another possibility, or another problem, this is the, the, the starting point back in 2002, when the two sons became in charge of the company. This is the preference between going to Max or going to McDonald's. Back in 2002, 4% of the population in Sweden said that next time I'll visit a fast food restaurant will be at Max. 32% said McDonald's. In 2003, we launched the Delafresh menu program. In 2005, we launched the program How We Include Persons with Disabilities. In 2008, we launched the Carbon Labeling Program. 
and now 27% of the suites say, next time I will go to a fast food restaurant, I will go to Max. And 17% say McDonald's. So this is, of course, highly profitable for all us also. And that is really the key issue. And the question is, what has happened? I would say nothing since 2008. Uh, I was, uh, was invited, we was invited to present at Planet Under Pressure conference for just a couple of weeks ago. And the problem was, and it was also presented in this Time mag Magazine article, that we are still the only company in the fast food business in the world who has carbon labeled the menu, trying to get a change in behavior with our customer. I think we are one of the only companies in Sweden also that systematically uh, are trying to hire persons with disabilities by ha trying to get a change in behavior with our managers. And that is a key issue. How can we change behavior? This is the way we do it. This is, this is the roadmap for us to work with the core values, to do the concrete actions and not just talk about it. And when it comes to the concrete action, I would like to highlight the UN high-level re report, a future worth choosing. And what says in that report is exactly that, that we have to create a world where people can choose to make better choices, where governments can make better choices. But the main thing in the report is also a call for action. And today, it's not our are we as had to answer. Today, it is really the world who now are calling. And it's up to you to pick up the phone this time. I won't do it. Thank you.